Hey, what's up, everybody? Evan Fraunberger here, and you've seen it all. Arctic Blast, Polar Vortex, but what a lot of people aren't talking about is just how cold and how dangerous that cold is or how to stay safe. And that's what we're going to be going over on this video, as well as where and when to expect the coldest temperatures. All right, as you can see right here, we're looking at the United States, and here is that really cold air like we've talked about before. Up in northern United States near Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, starting to enter into Wisconsin, all of these temperatures are like negative 20 to negative 30 degrees, and that's not even factoring in the wind chill. And in fact, we've already had a measurement of negative 70 degrees up here in northern United States. Let's move this forward and see what we can expect for the rest of the United States. So as you can see here, most of this cold air is just about to push into the United States through Nebraska, into Kansas there, and just doesn't make it into the northern part of Oklahoma. But that's really important in terms of this very dangerous cold air up here near Montana, Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota. This is where those really dangerous temperatures are gonna set in. And as we move it just a little bit forward, you can see that even spreads into Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. And let me tell you, in fact, the two states that I'm actually the most concerned about here is Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas, as their infrastructures aren't really built for this amount of cold. So later on in the video, we're going to go over some safety tips on what you can do to prepare now for this cold, just in case there's a power outage. But moving all the way through the end of this model run, you can see that this cold really spreads almost throughout the entire United States. There's very few spots that don't get hit by this cold. Kind of the southern tip of Florida, they seem to escape it. The southern part of Arizona and most of California escape a lot of this dangerous cold. For the most part, there's definitely millions of Americans here that are going to have to prepare for this intense cold and wind. I mean, once you get that wind blowing through, it can knock out power. If you don't have a plan in place, it can actually be deadly if you're not prepared. Let's go over to the precipitation here and see what we're looking at. As you can see, this cold and snow is already starting up here in Montana and North Dakota, a little bit in Wyoming there. And moving this forward, we're expecting the snow to start moving through North Dakota, South Dakota, and into Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and even parts of Wisconsin here by Wednesday, 7 p.m. Going a little bit forward, you can see that cold extends all the way down into Oklahoma and, and potentially even northeastern Texas there. As you can see, Dallas might be getting some mixed precip or even some snow. The concerning part is we're going to have a decent amount of snowfall up here in northern Arkansas. Southeastern Missouri, Illinois is going to get whopped by the storm. This is what we're going to be calling a snow squall uh, which means that there's probably going to be pretty heavy winds this is probably where we're going to start seeing some of those blizzard warnings near chicago madison and then moving this forward even further you can see that snow moves into michigan indiana kentucky tennessee and all the way even down into alabama might have a chance here for a little bit of an accumulation moving even further you can see that northern georgia might get in on the action but it seems unlikely and looking at the time here at 3 a.m on friday but you can see that ohio West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, they're starting to get some snow now, and that snow is starting to move out of uh, Alabama, still going through Kentucky and Tennessee there. And then moving this even further, Pennsylvania, New York, starting to get the back end of the snow squall here as we have a lot of this precip out in front. So initially some states like Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, you might get this initial blast of snow, but then on the backside you're gonna get a lot of this warmer, potentially up to 50 degree temperatures with some rain. And on the backside of that, potentially gonna get some of these snow squalls right around this time for Eastern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and then eventually into Maine, we're gonna start seeing 40 uh, mile per hour winds up to 65 mile per hour wind gusts. And depending on where you are in elevation, if you're higher up in elevation, potentially up to 80 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, so a lot can go wrong with the storm, especially up for the Northeast. If you guys start getting power outages and then have this cold come in on the backside. So let's finish the model out here. And as you can see, that snow moves through Vermont and starts to enter into New Hampshire. I think Maine will get a little bit of this, but it's mainly gonna be on the Northwestern and Northern part of Maine. And yeah, that's what the models are saying. So let's go look at the total snowfall amounts that we can expect from this storm. Again, these are the most uncertain parts of the storm. So I just wanna put that caveat in there before we start looking. All right, so we start off getting that snow in Wyoming, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. And as you can see, we're already getting up to five, six inches over here in Minnesota, down into Iowa, and then in Wisconsin by 8 a.m. on Thursday. We're starting to see accumulations pick up here, you know, four to five inches there uh, for most of Wisconsin. And moving this forward, you start to see that snow starting to show up there in Illinois, Indiana, but not a lot of it is, is falling. 
Uh, it seems like this storm has shifted more to the north and east in the last few model runs. The main threat here for a lot of accumulation is really going to be up there in Canada. Keep on moving this forward. You can see that there's some lake effect snow happening here on the western coast of Michigan. Um, that's going to be up to a foot of snow. I would say that could potentially be the most snow that we will see. You know, the storm itself is not going to cause that much snow in Michigan especially compared to what you guys are used to up there. But as it interacts with this warmer lake here and causes some of that lake effect snow, um, there's definitely gonna be an opportunity there for accumulation. And, and really for the rest of the, the east and northeast, um, we're seeing little spotty accumulations possible in Alabama, um, up to two to four inches in Tennessee, uh, two to four inches over here in Kentucky. And then as we get into Pennsylvania, where you have a couple more mountains and into New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, um, we're starting to see, you know, eight to nine, possibly a foot of snow, depending on how high in elevation you live uh, up in the northeast. But that's pretty much it. The good news is, is that the snow is falling in places that have the infrastructure to deal with it. Uh, so that's unlike the story of the cold temperatures moving into the central United States and down into the south, where governments aren't really prepared uh, to deal with that amount of cold. So we'll have to see how it goes, but next we're gonna go and talk about some of the safety tips and how you can stay safe. So you're sitting in your house and the wind is howling and you know by walking your dog earlier that day that the temperatures outside are extremely cold. And all of a sudden, the power goes out. What do you do? So here's some tips and tricks on how to prepare. Keep potable heaters at least three feet away from furniture, bedding, walls, clothing, and other flammable items. An electric blanket can help keep you warm at night. Um, but make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions and make sure to turn it off and unplug it when it's not in use because that could cause a fire. Never use your stove or oven to heat your home. That can also cause a fire. Cover any exposed water pipes and leave pool pumps running to prevent freezing. Keep thermostats at 68 degrees or lower to save energy, especially because a lot of people, will, they'll be blasting their heat. And if you know, you're in one of those areas where your infrastructure is not really able to handle the increased demand of energy needed in order to you know power increase amount of people using their heaters all at once uh, you definitely want to try to minimize the use of of your own heater to prevent that from happening if everyone did that at the same time you know the power might not go out but it usually doesn't happen at night close blinds or drapes to keep the cold air out during the day open blinds and drapes to let the warm sunshine in if you have a fireplace make sure your chimney flue is open before using it um, because if you don't, some of the smoke can get inside your house and, and CO2 poisoning um, can definitely cause um, bad outcomes, including death. Never leave a fire or smoldering embers unattended. Place candles in sturdy containers or holders and keep them on solid surfaces where they cannot be knocked over. Check your smoke detector batteries to make sure that they are working just in case. And also make sure that you have, you know, a couple warm blankets with you. Stock up on your water um, reserves. When power goes out, uh, if you don't have a lot of snow and the power goes out, typically you don't need more than a couple of days of food. So just make sure you get um, enough canned food to last you a couple of days, enough water to last you a couple of days. Make sure you have blankets just in case the power goes out and you don't have a fireplace. If you get all of that before the temperatures start to plunge, uh, you should be all right. Just make sure when you go to the shopping centers to not buy too much as other people are going to need supplies too. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. Just a little quick update for you guys. Uh, we'll have probably almost exact details here, hopefully tomorrow. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And yeah, see you later.